So in the Navy, there's a few rates that qualify as special operations, right? You have special operators, SO. You have special boat team guys, which is SWIC, and you have EOD. The only reason why I know a little bit about SO and SB in the Navy is because um, this program that I was a part of, we, we were trained by Stratagos. Now, Stratagos is a group of ex uh, SWIC and ex-SEALs and they come together and they teach idiots like me not to get killed. So that's, uh, that's what I, we had a, a year and a half training uh, dealing with Stratagos and on the East Coast we went to a, um, a boat operations school and same guys, SEALs and SWIC. Okay, my first experience with special operations was on uh, FFG-60, the, uh, the Rodney M. Davis. We were crossing the uh, Bay of Bengal and we picked up people in Singapore. Nobody knew anything about them. People were speculating who they are, especially the guys that, were, that got dropped from buds. They're like, I think this is this and this and this, but nobody really knew besides the captain and maybe you know anybody else with a top secret clearance. And that's a big thing you need to know. If you're special, you have a top secret clearance. So after the frigate decommissioned, I was given a choice to do riverines, which I wanted to do, but you have to obviously serve, give one more year to the military. So you have to, so my contract was five years. I would have to add on to six. So that's what obelisk serve is. There's a lot of little niche, niche uh, opportunities in the Navy that require that extra year, you know, cause you're going to spend a year in training. So um, I, I wanted to go to the riverines. I didn't want to ob obelisk serve because I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know if I was going to stay in the Navy or not. So Another opportunity came, which was ACU-1 in Coronado, California. I'm like, Coronado, that's where, I, that's the SEALs, that's where SEALs are? And I'm going to, I want to go there. So I got a front row seat for three years at Coronado every day, getting to um, watch these guys go through buds. And I'm telling you, man. I was such an American fanatic when I was there. I was just like, I'd see him running, I'd be like, Grr. you know, go get him. And I, I, you know, you always want to cheer him on. Anybody that's at Coronado, whether you're a CB or um, ACB or ACU1, you're driving in, you pass the master at arms, and then you see him running, and you, you just want to give him some encouragement. Like, keep it going, man. Don't freaking quit. And you go to, uh, you go to lunch, and you see them all eating, and they're all sandy, they're all beat up, and they're all messed up, and... Uh, it's just such a cool place. If you ever get to go to ACU1 or um, ACB or BSCB, you're going to get a great experience. You get to see EOD, and it's a really lucky place to be. A common misconception about Navy SEALs and Special Operations people is that they're all gorillas. They're all these huge, beefed-out, you know, lords of war. And that's absolutely not what I saw. I saw about half of them were decent-sized. There was a few freaks that were big, you know, 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, big boys. But the vast majority of them were like 5'10", to 5'7". So just regular sized guys, unassuming uh, builds, not, nothing that you would think, oh, that's automatically a freaking, uh, you know, a warrior. A lot of them are just regular looking folks. And um, that's that. So let's say... Let's say your buddy is in the Navy and he's telling you you can't talk about what he's done, you know, and he works with the Navy SEALs, whatever. There's one question you just need to ask him, you know, what's your clearance level? If that person says secret, you don't work with SEALs. Let's say all, all, all hell breaks loose, the apocalypse happened, and the greatest fighting force in the history of mankind uh, fails somehow. They're not going to bring in Seaman Timmy. They're going to bring in another SEAL team, you know? And that's what I, I experienced. We, when, I, when, I, when I worked on the ship, we had development group, and they're not even on the ship. They got their own ship. And we had the SEAL Team 3, was, which was back off, uh, backup, and they were in birds, and they were going to be the responsive unit. We were in the well deck, uh, basically, for no, no reason. Just, we were just there hanging out. And they did their mission, and we don't know what it was. We got an award for it, and <laughs> that's that. <laughs> that's all I know. A huge thing with the special operations community is they don't do anything during the daytime. 
we have the ultimate advantage uh, tactically at night. So all of our operators are doing stuff at night because we have the money. We, we, have, we can afford the things to see clearly at night. So um, if people aren't talking about their operations at night, then they're probably lying to you. Here's something cool. If you, you have a rate like intelligence and you work with, uh, and you have a top secret clearance, you, you can get attached to those boys. You can get right in there with it. So that's pretty cool. Um, you're going to be in those, those navigation briefs talking about really, really cool stuff. And you probably won't get to tell anybody about it afterwards, but so what? You got to do it, you know? I will tell you one story I know. So about a gorilla. <laughs> So we had this, we were running in Coronado with our vests on, you know, it's kind of like an added way to uh, ruin your back. So <laughs> we're running around this stupid uh, circle, but the SEALs were also running. They were doing their own PRT. And me and Johnny, uh, my buddy Johnny, we were running together. And we see this gargantuan human being, long hair, big old beard. We're like, that's gotta be a SEAL. We watch this guy come around he starts slowing down and there's this blue pickup truck guy gets out of the truck little guy pulls down the gate this big gorilla sits in the back of this truck and the truck goes <laughs> the guy uh, grabs a water bottle he, this guy had his own water boy this the guy driving the truck was his, was his water boy and he go big dude starts sucking down water or whatever then he lays back in the truck. The truck is still like this. Dude gets into the car and drives him away. There are gorillas. They're not all like that, though, man. Special operations, that's all I got, man. I don't got anything cool about it. Um, people see me up there in Afghanistan. I think, you know, I qualified to, to go do that position, but I really got to do the cool stuff because I'm nice to people and, you know, they want to keep me around sometimes. So that's it, man. I'm, I'm never going to ever claim that I was something I'm not. And uh, I'm just a regular idiot. So have a great day. Thank you for watching.